Once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to The World Over Live. My next guest has been living in Jerusalem for 30 years. He's currently the president of the Franciscan Foundation for the Holy Land. I sat down with him here in D.C. to discuss the challenges facing Christians, the persecution in the region, and what he's doing to help these beleaguered people. Here's my interview with Father Peter Vasco. Father Vasco, thanks for being here. Uh, given the rise of ISIS, and we've seen it over the last few years, it has highlighted the Christian persecution in Iraq, in Syria. What impact has that had on the Christians in the Holy Land? It, re it really hasn't had a direct impact uh, as such because uh, the Christians are in the state of Israel and the West Bank controlled by, by Israel. So in a way, uh, they've been protected. Uh, there are, there are, perhaps we've heard stories where perhaps there's some infiltration of some uh, agents of ISIS who would be coming in, but uh, the Christians obviously are aghast of what is happening there to their fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, the the uh, the executions, mm -hmm. and but they have not been affected, you know, by that in a sense because they're protected. They're in a safe in a safe environment. According to some of the statistics, though, the Christians are leaving. I mean, there's only about 150 to 160,000 Christians. That's 2 percent living in the Holy Land. Right. What impact will that have over the long, long term? And how are you working to maintain this population? Well, people need motivations and incentives to stay in the Holy Land, to remain mm. in the Holy Land, the Christians. Yes, they're leaving, but at the last, uh, we had a, a study made the last 10 years the exodus is slowing down a bit right now. Ah, okay. And to what do you attribute that? Uh, that's been attributed to the fact that they're being given opportunities. More and more organizations, such for example, the Franciscan Foundation for the Holy Land, is offering them free college scholarships, a free college education. All of these students who, who apply and, and receive a four-year college education, uh, upon graduation, they become professional people, pharmacists, mm -hmm. physicians, engineers, accountants, and they're staying. Mm -hmm. So this has been, uh, with other organizations, been the real solution of keeping the Christians there because they have a motivation to stay. Now they're not they're not being dumped in the, into the sea and saying goodbye and you know good luck. They're being given opportunities, and that's that is what's keeping the Christians there. Patriarch Thwal of uh, Fawad Thwal recently said, "These are the main causes of suffering to the Christian community." He said, "The confiscation and occupation of the lands, the Israeli wall, travel restrictions and checkpoints, and religious fanaticism and radicalism being the worst." What can you? What can the Franciscans and the Franciscan Foundation do to stem or stop any of those motivators? Well, the problem is, is that the Franciscans, as you know, have been there for 800 years. Right. We've always been mediators, etc. If you remember back uh, about 10 years ago when the siege of the, oh, uh, of the Church of Nativity, uh, where there were 200 and some odd uh, Palestinian uh, so-called militants inside the church, and we, the Franciscans, gave them, gave them um, sanctuary. Uh, we've always become mediators between the two, the two forces. Uh, we've done that on several occasions with the Israeli government and the Palestinian Authority. A lot of those negotiations are, are secret, are very quiet, but this is the only way that I think that we can, we, we can't resolve the political problem as such. No. Uh, this is not our, that's not our part. Our part is to play as mediators, as, as people of goodwill, to bring other people of goodwill, to show both sides of the story, to see if something can be done to enact uh, peace for more peaceful resolutions and all these different issues. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't control the settlement situation. We can't really control the checkpoints. Those are basic sufferings that uh, Patriarch Sabara said and said, said so correctly. Mm -hmm. But we have to give solace, we have to give hope, we have to continue to help people uh, through humanitarian areas to give them some sort of a hope for the future. And that's what, that's what we're trying to do as Franciscans. Now, you all have faced some radicalism yourselves, have been subject to it. Um, I well, want to start with St. Charbel's Maronite Monastery, which isn't yours, but it, near Bethlehem, it was the target of an arson not long ago, last yes, year. Yes, I heard that. And also, as you know, the uh, 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 multiplication of loaves and fishes. Church of the multiplication. Uh, the problem is, if you you look at in the past when the, there were incidents of this in Israel, uh, and, 
we always had a problem trying to find the, the, uh, the people responsible for these crimes. Uh, but in this particular incident, at least the one in Topka, they did find two or three ultra-Orthodox religious uh, individuals mm -hmm. who did commit the crime. But it's something that, uh, you know, it's isolated in many ways. It's sad, right. but we continue to have to be open and, and don't necessarily just say, well, we, we, the yeah, Jewish people are our enemies. No. Uh, I would say Israel and Israel, we're trying to work with everybody, both with uh, uh, people of the Jewish faith, mm -hmm. of the Muslim faith. And that's what Christianity is all about, always trying to, to unify. And build bridges. Uh, yeah, and, and there's, you know, the, the other yeah. thing is that there's, uh, no, there's no basic trust between the, between the uh, Israelis and the, the Muslims. Mm -hmm. That has been going on since 1947. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the problem is that when you continue with this mentality, uh, how do you bring about peace? I don't think there will ever be peace. I said many times in the Senate, I think there will be a semblance of peace. But we need the uh, goodwill of people, of uh, peacemakers, to mediate that peace. How long have you been in the Holy Land? 30 years. Hmm. Long time. Okay. Looking back, have things gotten better? Have you advanced that ball, uh, the cause of peace, bringing these warring factions? I always saw the Franciscans having visited there and, and watched this situation for a long time. You all really stand between these two warring sides. And if peace is possible, it's going to be facilitated in some way through that joiner, which is the Franciscans and the Christian population. Is it better or worse than it was 30 years ago? I think it's uh, it's about the same. I don't mm. think it's uh, I think it's the same situation I, uh, that I when I saw in the beginning, uh, and it's gotten worse. Then it goes back to you know uh, the status quo. Uh, the problem is is that uh, you're dealing with political situations, political uh, po ideology, uh, and you know try to sit down with Muslims and talk about having peace when, for example, their homes are, are being confiscated or their lands are being confiscated. Uh, uh, or when you have uh, the settlers uh, uh, killing Arabs uh, in the West Bank. Those things, it's very difficult to talk to, to both sides like this, but we try. We continue to, we, we don't uh, say, oh, it's finished now, that the end of, it's right. the, end of, of, the, of, the, of the negotiations. But it's always ongoing. Uh, France of Assisi, as you know, was a mediator. And all we can do is one thing at a time. But I just want to mention something. You know, yeah. you, when you think about the violence um, in general over there in the Middle East and even perhaps in, in Israel from time to time, uh, I think there are, in general, there are two basic risks. The one risk is you hear many people saying, oh, well, the, you know, the Middle East is a quagmire. Uh, we really shouldn't get involved with it. Then you hear people say, because of our own economic crisis, we really can't help these people. That's indifference. That's a risk that people are doing all the time. The other, the other one, where, where people are not really you know, talking to each other, are not, really, are not trusting each other. We have to take steps. We have to get negotiations on, 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 uh, on, on, on the level. And the other risk is diametrically opposed, a call to arms. This country wants to destroy us. We have to destroy that country. So those are two basic risks that, 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 are, that surround this whole problem we hear about the violence in the Holy Land. Mm -hmm. And how is it solved? It's going to be solved by negotiations. It's going to be solved by people of goodwill. And that's what the Franciscans are attempting to do in this, mm. in this instant. Final question. Your foundation does so much, particularly in the field of education, education yes. and housing. Tell people a little bit about that mission and where it stands now. Well, we've given over 375 college scholarships, free college education, to, uh, to, the, to Christian students who are economically marginalized but have at least a B average in high school. Uh, Eighty percent of these young people that graduate become, as I said earlier, pharmacists, dentists, accountants, uh, physicians, uh, and, and these are the people who are going to leave the Holy Land. And because of the help and the, and the contributions and donations from the American Catholics, especially, you know, talking about it on your various shows, we have, we have been very successful, thank God, in, in maintaining and, and providing those, uh, those, those motivations for them to remain in the mm. Holy Land. So Probably we're very, very basketball. happy. Well, yeah. thank you for being here and for all Thanks you Thanks so do. much, Raymond.